Hello, this is Spellbinder doing a follow-up video on the one I put out about Rick Clay and the uh, explanation of why he committed suicide. And Ivan Crane was probably saying that he just got too much information overload and it was too much for him to handle. But this is a lot of, you know, if you don't have any occult background studies, then this stuff is kind of overwhelming when you start running into it. It's everywhere. Occult symbols are everywhere. You can find occult symbols on any building, anywhere. Anything the Masons put their hands on has occult symbolism on it. Uh, and it's there to go in your subconscious. And the symbols, a lot of them are power symbols for them. They're able to drain your energy into them through these symbols. So, this is just not their you know, low level, what they call porch Masons. These are your high level 33 plus Masons who actually know what's going on. And the New World Order is all into this occultness, the Illuminati. Yeah, let's see. This is what you're going to go over here. It's going to have all these in the contents. And i got to get to it. Because i only got 15 minutes and there's 38 pages to cover. You'll be able to stop this and go. And, and also expand your screen so you can read this stuff and see these symbols and everything a lot clearer. The London Olympic 2012 Zion, the New Jerusalem. Yes, London will be the Zionist New Jerusalem. That's the purpose of Zionism. Recreate that. Despite public pressure, an international Olympic committee stood fast on keeping the logo. It cost 400,000 pounds, and the Brits were really mad about that. It cost so much to make this make the symbol that when you break it down and put it in order, it says Zion. Huh? Imagine that. Here's a poem by uh, William Blake's Jerusalem, where it talks about Jerusalem coming to England. Even see, this has been being planned for a long, long time, and now it's coming up. Prince William's going to be the new Christ because he was born just at the right time. I guess it was 82, and he'll be 30 years old on 2012. At the same time, that's the 30th Olympics. Hmm. Here's the street plan they put together for the area. This is the area where they're going to have the Olympics. This whole area where these roads are. If you look carefully, anyone that lives there will probably recognize these roads like High Street and oh, Carpenter's Road. All these names, all these religious names to these roads. Uh, let's see, Strat Stratford in London has become host to the Olympic Village which is undergoing massive regeneration due to the project. Here's a, a, an, an enlargement and pointing out certain things. The East Cross route, the Layton, <coughs> the Layton stones, right, Ley Lines. Uh, you got the, what they call the cross with the bent in it. You'll find this entire side of the Olympic village is surrounded by somewhat biblical and mystical road names. New Jerusalem, you ask? Hmm. And you get the East Cross route, actually the Pyramid 12, A is a symbol for Pyramid. Uh, find out that most of a lot of the uh, letters in the alphabet are related to the Pyramid or Egypt. And S, is, S isn't shaped like that because it looks like a snake. Imagine that. This is the logo of the Order of the Eastern Star. It used to be just a f the female's version of the Masons, Freemasons. Now it's uh, males are allowed to join. It's similar to that found in the UK passport, an acknowledgement of the pagan deity of Satan or Saturn, the ancient one for Jupiter. Angel Lane, reverence to Angel Gabriel, the Holy Spirit. You'll find out that it's also the symbol for the one eye in the pyramid, actually. It's supposed to be Gabriel. If you look at the movie Constantine, uh, the angel Gabriel was a female. We are, are sexless. He says that, oh, you've been keeping your eye on me. Her, see, symbolism in movies. Talked about that in other videos. Uh, location, ley lines. They found ley, ley found in their names, ley lines. Claremont Road, halfway between Leighton and Leighton Stone. Yeah, conclusion on this site was picked for reasons which go far beyond the spare wasteland. Yeah. Here's the Beijing's Olympics 2008 
Zion in the fifth world. Now you got Al Gore organized a series of concerts around the world initiating the year's campaign to combat climate warming. Well, warming <laughs> that turned out now it's called climate change because they messed up calling it that since it's going to actually go into an ice age here shortly. Uh, start feeling that. It'll take thousands of years to get totally into it, but it, we'll start feeling it coming. Put it that way. We'll have extremely cold winters. Uh, here's Madonna who was supposed to perform her crucifixion act and didn't do it. Oh, uh, let's see. Here's the symbol that they used in the Beijing 2008 Olympics. And that too is a symbol of Zion. Because if you take it and break it apart, you get the Z-I-O-N. The rings as a symbol. Here it is what it looks like here. When you break that symbol apart. It looks like that. So isn't that what the 2012 London Olympics logo, uh, logo says too? And you got the elements, all the elements. You got the air, fire, earth, water, and so on. I think they have uh, nature is one of them. They have the Chinese animal too. The orange is animal. Green was wind. This little critter. This is what BB's forehead, a spiritual third eye. Yeah, I said you'll get to read through this, and once you read through all this, then watch his video, and it'll make a lot of sense. You'll have a little bit of a background knowledge on what he's talking about. And Rick Clay, because Rick Clay and Justin Stephanus, or Stephens, has announced that their belief that come the Olympics 2012, we are going to see one of the largest hoaxers ever portrayed on man. Oh yeah, they're getting ready to do Project Blue Beam and all types of stuff. Uh, fake UFO invasion. Yeah, it's all to get us ready for Prince Williams to become Christ. Because he'll be 30 years old, like I said, on that date. And Christ began his preaching, his, his sermons, on that date, around the, his 30th birthday. Uh, so you, we get to go through the Olympic flame which is lit by the sun passes through Lhasa and Tibet on the summer solstice the sun is most high but they're going to use it as the internal sun of Lucifer oh and we mustn't forget the Olympic torch symbolizes the veiled moon goddess Isis Statue of Liberty is a symbol of Isis as well as being a man in drag but it, you know you have to do your research you'll find this out uh, XXX explained the Olympics porn and the proof and read through that. I said I gotta get going here. I'm at eight minutes and I'm only on 17 pages. I gotta speed this up again. The first Olympics were Russia or Germany came up with the World Pyramid during World War II, right after, after the summer of 32 Summer Olympics. Uh, let's see, what does this all mean? Well, you have to read through this. It could also equal 666, the XXX. And the mother goddess is Isis. The mother figure of the Egyptian Trinity, son of God, a horse. And then you got the uh, Christ is also a holiday Christmas. Hot White Christmas is a pagan holiday. Easter is a pagan holiday. It worships the solstice and the changing of the sun dying and the sun coming back. Kind of is what Christmas is because it gets cold and it starts getting warmer after the 20. Around the 25th, it starts to get warmer and warmer. Actually, 22nd, the days start getting longer and longer. Ah, uh, okay. You got the truth or always hidden in plain sight. Here, you got this symbol, British symbol here with the XXX. The three judges. Now, where it goes on. It's what I would like to explain, but I just don't have time. Uh, here it is, it says in the year 2012, he will be 30 years old. His name is Prince William, and the Olympic Games, without doubt, there is an imaginary wordplay at work connecting the significant event to the 2012 Olympics. His logo spells Zion, the New Jerusalem. Brian Gurish, Common Purpose. Brian Gurish discovered Common Purpose when he was involved with a group in Plymouth in the West England, helping people find jobs, so on and so forth. It's like really it's hard to cover all this. You can copy and paste this 
and watch that. How bad about about that? Like I said, when you can go through this, and uh, you can stop this. I can I can get on here like this, a couple of seconds, like this, a couple of seconds, give you enough time to stop, read, continue. Uh, hold it here for a couple of seconds so you can stop it, pause it that is, and uh, continue after you read what it says. Uh, this is all about the numerology of it all. Yes, they use numerology, Illuminati. It's all, it all has to do with numerology, symbols. There's the guy that created the logo. Like I said, he's Aleister Crowley looking. And, uh, like Aleister Crowley in his later years. <laughs> okay, all the symbols of the sun. Kind of like what Jordan Maxwell was talking about, the sun symbols. And he said it's basically sun worship and everything. I heard somebody try to criticize him, tell me that, that uh, Jordan Maxwell was a, was a mason. I go, well, so was Fritz Myers. And he came out and told you everything he knew about masons, the inside information that you're not supposed to know, the secrets of the masons. Well, just look at it this way. Jordan Maxwell's doing the same thing. If he is a mason, he's coming out and telling the secrets of the masons. So he's not a bad guy. He's one of the good guys that come forward, like Fritz Meyer. I'm trying to tell you, hey, this is what's going on. This is how they really think. <laughs> there are a bunch of eugenicists that want to kill off everyone and have a bunch of people as slaves. That's what these elitists want. There's some more symbology. Four chimneys. UFO flying around London. All-seeing eye. Well... Project Blue Beam, that's where they'll be able to project an uh, image of God or anything they want and then transmit in microwaves a beam of sound into your head. And you'll hear it in your head. And you'll think you're listening to God. God's talking to you because you hear the voice in your head, not in your ears. All part of the Orwellian 1984, War is Peace, Freedom is Slavery, Ignorance is Strength. They use that now. I hear government in the U.S. using it all the time once. Uh, the Olympic torch relay and religion of the New World Order. The seven chakras in the human body, which are the four particular importance. The religion of the New World Order. This is pretty good. It's a blue ba uh, the blueprint based on spiritual sun worship. That's why I was saying it's inside Luciferian worship. Sun worship. Let's see, how do you propose a multilingual planet that could phase out all but one language unless indeed this refers not to spoken language but to telepathy? Well, microwaves. They had coke machines in uh, Japan. They took them down. They used to say, have a coke and you'd hear it in your head. <laughs> in Japanese. Here's the uh, your passport in England there. It's kind of interesting. The UK passport has this seal on it and this is basically the tree of the Chatras. And you get to look at that. This is the chakras the, in the body. These are energy centers of the body. Then the, he overlaps and shows you where they're at on the symbol on your passport. Interesting, huh? And this is 37, the full interpretation. And then I got to uh, go like this so you can get the end. 38. The interpretation of the human chakra system is an observation page in the UK passport containing the number 11 sealed by two pentagrams and the sign of Satan. This design can also be found on the passport photo as the hologram where the seal of Satan sits appropriately on your third eye chakra. Check your passport, England, UK, and see if that's not on your passport. This is all very interesting. Like I said, this is it for now. I just wanted to give you something so you could read over before you go and find his videos. Just just put in Rick Clay and you'll find them. Until next time, this is Spellbinder with this information of, of the New World Order and what's happening in 2012. Be good, be good at it. Watch them. They're getting ready to pull stuff on us shortly. Until then, good day.